So if we check between source and drain, as we can see, we get a reading here in the multimeter means this is a good MOSFET. This is basically NPN channel MOSFET. When you put the red probe in the source and the black probe in the drain and you get a reading means you have NPN channel MOSFET. And when we switch the probes, as you can see, we don't get anything in the multimeter. So between source and get, you should not get nothing in the multimeter. Also between gate and drain and drain nothing in the multimeter means the MOSFET is a good MOSFET. You will get just a reading between source and drain in accordance with the type of the MOSFET. If the MOSFET is MP in MOSFET, when you put the red probe in the source and the black probe in the drain, you will get a reading. So let's check the third MOSFET as you can see here between source and drain we get a reading means this is another np in channel mosfet okay this is np in channel mosfet basically this is a good mosfet between gate and source nothing in the multimeter gate and drain nothing in the multimeter means this is a good mosfet Basically, a bad MOSFET is a MOSFET that get a low resistance in the multimeter. Let's check these two MOSFETs also. Basically, here this is a 4P MOSFET or a 3P MOSFET. So here we have gates, as you can see, drain. Here also we have drain. Basically, these two terminals are connected together. And here we have source. We're gonna use the same working principle to check this MOSFET. So here, as you can see, this is drain. We have a low resistance in the multimeter. It means these two terminals are connected together. So let's check right now between source and drain. We get a reading. So let's check this MOSFET also using the same working principle. Always the two terminals in the middle are connected together. So between source and drain, we get a reading means this is a PMP channel MOSFET. Because if we switch the probes, nothing in the multimeter. So basically this is a good MOSFET. So remember, a bad MOSFET is a MOSFET that gives a low resistance or a buzzer when you test it. Here, basically, this kind of MOSFETs we find it in the laptop, in the computer or old laptop motherboard. So here, as you can see, using the same working principle, so the two terminals in the middle are the drain, as you can see. We have a low resistance in the multimeter, means the two terminals are connected together. So let's check between source and drain. We get a reading, means this MOSFET is a good MOSFET. Okay? So let's switch the probes. We should not get anything in the multimeter, means this is a good MOSFET. So let's check this MOSFET also. Here we have the gate, drain, as you can see, and source. So let's check between source and drain. Here we have nothing in the multimeter. If we switch the probe, we get a ready means this is MP in channel MOSFET because we put the red probe in the source and the black probe in the drain. So let's check this MOSFET also basically this is a flat MOSFET, 8P flat MOSFETs. We find this kind of MOSFETs near to the processor. So let's check it using the same working principle. Here we have a dot means this is the pin number one, two, three and so on. This is the source. These three pins are connected together. Here we have the gate and over here we have drain. Four pins connected together. So let's check right now the drain. All pins, as you can see, are connected together. Here we have four pins connected together. As you can see in the multimeter, we get a low resistance. So between source and drain, 
we get a low resistance. So when we check between source and drain, we get a low resistance. Why? Because the processor is connected to the motherboard. If we remove the processor, we will get a high resistance. So it's not a short circuit. So let's remove the processor right now and check again that MOSFET. Now we remove the MOS the processor. Let's check right now between source and drain. As you can see, we get a high resistance. So this is a good MOSFET. It's not a shorted MOSFET. Also for this, we get a high resistance. But if we connect back the processor, we will get a low resistance. Means the resistance is for the processor, not for the MOSFET. So here we switch the props, we don't get anything. So let's put back the processor and then check the MOSFET. So now the, the processor is mounted or connected to motherboard. So let's check between source and drain. We have here a low resistance. This is not a short. This is basically the resistance for the CPU. So as you can see, we have 0.23. This is a low resistance, but this resistor resistance is for the cpu so let's check it out this mosfets also basically here this is a small mosfet with three terminals as you can see using the, the same working principle we gotta check between source and drain so the rule is you should get a reading between source and drain if you get a low resistance or a buzzer means the mosfet is bad exactly the same as the transistor so let's check here between source and drain we get here as you can see a reading in the multimeter means this MOSFET is good. Between gate, drain and gate and source, you should not get anything as you can see. So let's check the second MOSFET. So here between drain and source, we get a reading as you can see in the multimeter. If we swap the props, we will not get anything as you can see here in the multimeter and of course between source and gate and drain and gate we will not get anything in the multimeter means these two MOSFETs are good MOSFETs on the multimeter now we gonna check and test the ceramic capacitors here this is the cpu circuit so let's check these three capacitors so normally the capacitor should not give any continuity as you can see also for this capacitor it gives a high resistance okay when you get a capacitor with a low resistance means the capacitor is bad. So for these capacitors, all these three are good capacitors. Now we're gonna see some capacitors in the chipset circuit, exactly the GMC circuit. Here for the chipsets, as you can see, you can find some capacitors with a low resistance. But this is not a short circuit. This is normal. So the low resistance is the resistance of the chipsets itself, okay? So we're gonna check these capacitors. So this is the back of the GMC hedge, okay? Here, as you can see, so even if we have 0, 080, means this value is, is normal, okay? Because this is a GMC hedge circuit. Let's check. Does also, as you can see, so let's check this capacitor. So, here, as you can see, we have a very low resistance. Okay, as you can see, let's check again. We have a low resistance 0 
This low resistance is the resistance of the chipsets, of the chipset. Okay. So this capacitor is not short to the ground. No, this is normal. With the I'm going to show you how to test TRIAC using the multimeter. As you can see here, we have a TRIAC, as you can see. Of course, it has three pins or three terminals, as you can see. So this is the pin number one, pin number two, and pin number three. So here we have the reference or the part number for the TRIAC. We have BTA12600 b if you have a better react with this reference, you should replace it with the same reference, of course. Here, this part is used to connect the triac with the heatsink because the triac gets hot when working. So basically, before going and testing the triac using the multimeter, I'm going first to show you all about the triac symbols. Okay, as you can see, this is the symbol of the track. It contains two diodes, as you can see, and of course, three terminals. So the anode, as you can see, one, the anode, two, and the gate. Of course, you can find anode, two, or T2, or M2, or MT2. All these names mean the same thing, okay? So here, as you can see, you can find also the symbol for the triac. But basically, the symbol is a, is a clear symbol. The diodes are clear. Here, the same symbol, as you can see. This is also a symbol for the triac, as you can see. Anyway, it contains three pins. So I'm going now to show you a real circuit in order to understand the working principle of the triac and how it works. This is an easy circuit that I'm going to explain to you. So basically, this is the triac. As you can see, it contains three terminals. Okay. And here we have a lamp. Okay. And here this is the a DC voltage, 12 volt DC voltage. And over here, the gate is connected to a switch and to a control signal. We have 1.5 volt DC. This is a control signal. So now the switch is open, the lamp is off, okay? You know why? Because the triac until now is not activated. So the current, as you can see, is not passed through the triac because the triac is not activated. So that's why the lamp is off. But if we close the switch, as you can see, now the control voltage 1.5 volt dc will pass through the switch and then to the gate and then now the triac will be activated okay so the triac has the same working principle basically as a transistor now the current will circulate through the circuit and will pass through the triac as you can see and then of course the lamp will be lit Okay, so basically the triac has about 80% the same working principle as a transistor or a MOSFET. But in terms of testing, it's not like a transistor. The triac testing is a very special testing. So now let's test the triac using the multimeter. Okay, so we're gonna of course select the continuity option in the multimeter, as you can see. Now, a good triac is a triac that shows 070 drop voltage between gate and anode 1. Okay, between the anode 1 and the gate, you should get about 070 in the multimeter. So let's check this triac. Okay, so between pin number 1 and pin number 3 or anode well, we should get about 070 in the multimeter. Of course, if you get 060 or 050, no problem, the same. So, let's check. We have about 068, means this is a good react. Even if, if we switch the props, we should get the same value as we get before. So, let's check. 
we have 0, 0,68. This is a Gert react. Okay? So, depending on the type of the triac you are testing, you can get 0, 0,50 or, or even 0, 0,40, no problem. So, always between the gate and the anode one, or between the pin number one and the pin number three, you should get a reading about 0, 0,70, 0, 0,60, 0, 0,50, no problem. But between other pins, you should not get anything in the multimeter, as you can see. Nothing between pin 3 and pin 2, as you can see. The only pins that shows the reading is pin number 1 and pin number 3, as you can see. Or the gate with the anode 1. And if you get any short, while testing the triac means the triac is bad. I'm going to teach you how to test SMG components. When I say SMG components, I mean, as you can see here, MOSFETs, ceramic capacitors, as you can see here, inductors, electrolytic capacitors, zener diodes, resistors, MOSFETs and transistors, tantalum capacitors, ICs, etc. So let's get started. So let's choose the continuity here as you can see here and check first diodes, inductors and ceramic capacitors. Okay. So let's begin from the input here. For example, we have as you can see here ceramic capacitor. So to test ceramic capacitors, it's easy. Of course, you can use the continuity option in the multimeter. So if you find any buzzer or any low resistance here means the capacitor is shorted. So let's check these two, for example, these two ceramic capacitors. As you can see in this multimeter, this is a good capacitor. Let's check the second one also. Here also, this is a good capacitor. If you find like this, as you can see, means the capacitor is bad. Okay? Here, basically, as you can see over here, this is inductor not diode why because we have here pl okay we have pl over here so let's check this inductor i should get a continuity in the multimeter as you can see in the multimeter means the inductor is good so here we have two mosfets basically we have two mosfets how we can check the mosfet so to know about mosfets do you see here this hole over here means this is the pin number one, pin number two, pin number three, four, etc. So always the three pins here are serious. The fourth pin and gate and the other four pins are drain. So these three pins are connected together. If you want, we can even check. So let's put the probe here and check with the second pin as you can see and the third pin as you can see. So these three pins are connected together, but this is the gate. It's not connected with the other three pins. And over here, these four pins are connected together. Why? Because this is the drain. So let's check. You see? The second pin, the third pin, and the fourth pin, as you can see. So four pins connected together. So if you want basically to check whether the MOSFET is good or not in the motherboard without removing it, you can just put one probe here in the source of the multimeter and the other probe here as you can see we get a reading as you can see in the multimeter about 500 drop voltage means this MOSFET is good it's not shorted we can do the same for this one also so first let's spot the first pin where is the first pin here we have the hole over here means this is the first pin the second the third one so these three are serves this is the gate and over here we have drain so we should always check between drain and source as you can see we should find a drop voltage about 500 400 no problem it's the same as you test a diode okay so these two mosfets are good now let's move on to this basically to this component do you see this component this is basically current sense resistor Okay, so this current sense resistor basically is a resistor with a very low resistance. Means if you check it using the multimeter and choosing, as you can see here, the buzzer or the continuity option, you should get a buzzer or a very low resistance like this. So let's check it. 
as you can see in the multimeter okay so here basically this is inductor so this is one type of inductor over here we have another type of inductor this is a very big inductor always this type of inductors are connected to power rails you can never find inductors that are connected to ground never in the motherboards so that's why you we use inductors to find out the short circuit in the motherboard so let's check this inductor also the same working principle for the inductor we should get as you can see here a very low resistance in the multimeter as you can see it means this inductor is good here also we have another inductor let's check it also this inductor over here also low resistance you see this inductor basically here we have the high pins and over here we have low here we have as you can see these two are ground and these two as you can see are positive terminals this the 90 volt pass exactly through this inductor so we can even check so if i put for example one probe here you see one probe here and check here you see so the 90 volt will pass directly here and then pass through this inductor and goes to the side of the inductor okay that's why you should always pay attention to inductors in every circuit because inductors if there is a bad inductor means a cutted inductor the voltage will stop passing to other side and you get you will get a dead motherboard so let's move on here as you can see we have basically a zener diode do you see the zener diode over here so to check the zener diode we should always spot and identify the cathode here we have the cathode do you see this black line means this is the cathode so we're gonna put the black probe of the multimeter in the cathode and the red probe in the anode we should find here a drop voltage about 500 400 600 so let's check as you can see 586 drop voltage means this is a good zener diode so please here i want to add that this this is not zener diode normally this is not a zener diode this is a normal diode why because we have here a black line sorry this is a normal diode i will show you the right zener diode so let's find out here a motherboard with where i have some zener diodes okay so let's check this motherboard over here let's check this motherboard okay yeah, this is great okay find the zener diode over here so do you see guys so this is basically the normal diode do you see here we have this black line we have the reference d means this is normal diode here we have cathode and over here we have anode but for this one as you can see here this is zener diode why because we have the blue line when you find a blue line like this one means this is zener diode this also is zener diode okay but for this as you can see here this one this is a normal diode we have the black line so then we can move on here basically we have other two inductors so let's check this inductors we should get a continuity as you can see we have the first diode the first inductor and and as you can see the second inductor here so this is good inductors so then as you can see here we have pq67 this this is basically a three terminal mosfet a three terminal mosfet so here we have gate source and drain always for this kind of mosfet you will find gate source and drain so let's check it basically we find we should find a drop voltage of about 500 or 600 so let's put the black probe here in the source and the red probe the red probe in the gate in the drain as you can see we get 596 means this is a good mosfet so let's check this one also as i told you before usually or always you will find here this is basically the gate here we have the source and here we have the drain so let's check again so here as you can see the black probe and over here the red probe so let's check 
I get a reading as you can see in the multimeter. But if I swap the props, I should not get any reading in the multimeter, as you can see. No reading in the multimeter. Okay, it's the same like if we check a diode. Okay, the same as a diode, as a zener diode, as you can see. We get here a reading when we put the black probe into cathode and the red probe into anode. And once we swap the probes, nothing in the multimeter, as you can see. Okay, so then let's pass and check other things. So we're gonna right now check this capacitors. Basically, this is electrolytic capacitors but first this kind of compound are also like this and like this one this is inductors always for inductors you should find a continuity as you can see here for inductors okay now let's check electrolytic capacitor here we have plus and over here we have minus this capacitor is polarized capacitor we use it for filtering purposes. This is inductor. Here we have another inductor. The inductor is used to stabilize the current in the circuit. This is basically ceramic capacitors to remove the noise in the circuit. Ceramic capacitors are not polarized like electrolytic capacitor. This is a fuse. As you can see over here we have F1 means fuse to protect the circuit. Here we have crystal, we have Y6 means crystal oscillator. Sometimes we can find crystal oscillator with X reference. So this is crystal oscillator. So this is diode. This is a normal diode, not zener diode. Over here we have the zener diode. The zener diode has a blue line here we have the cathode and over here we have the anode so these components are mosfets we have source three pins connected together we have gate and we have drain four pins connected together here we have ic's this is one ic this is another ic so this component is a 10 term capacitor we have the positive terminal and the negative terminal. Here, as you can see, we have another kind of tantalum capacitor. This is polarized capacitor. So here we have resistors, normal resistors, and over here we have, as you can see here, network resistors. This is network resistors. Network resistors are gathered one, two, three, or more resistors in order to gain the space in the motherboard. This is the clock generator, I see. Near to it, we have the crystal oscillator, X. So the clock generator is the responsible for the clock or the timing in the whole motherboard. So here we have the processor, GMCH, and graphic card, all three chipsets connected in one chipset. So, and over here we have the ICH or the sword bridge. Basically, the ICH is the responsible for all parts in the motherboard. This is the BIOS, basic input output system. We have this hole here, means this is the pin number one. And over here we have pin number eight. Always in the pin number eight, you will find 3.3 volts without powering on the motherboard. So this is basically the charge circuit. You will find it usually near to the power jack or to the battery connector. Charge IC. Here we have two MOSFET switches. Here you will find 19 volt, 19 volt, 19 volt, and 19 volt. This is basically switches. And over here we have the super IO, is IO. The super IO is the responsible for the whole power in the motherboard. This circuit basically is for 3.3 volt. Here you will get 3.3 volt, here you will get 5 volt. Here we have pad as you can see. Pad, as you can see, this is also pad or test point. This is the audio control IC near to audio connectors. 
Here we have the CMOS battery slot. And over here we have a connected CMOS battery, 3 volt CMOS battery. So it's reference, pay attention always. If you want to replace this battery, you should replace it with another with the same reference, CR2032. This is the reference for batteries for computer and laptops. For computer motherboards, this is basically electrolytic capacitors, inductor, MOSFET, IC, crystal oscillator, LED, buzzer, MOSFETs, the ICH or salt bridge, another kind of oscillator. We have ceramic capacitors and resistors. CPU socket, where we have a lot of ceramic capacitors to remove the noise in the circuit. This is basically a motherboard for a rotor, where we have the fuse. The input power plug, we have a switch, we have capacitors. This is basically electrolytic capacitors to filter the voltage. Here we have electromagnetic interference. Here we have a diode, a protection diode. This is not a fuse, this is a bridge rectifier. Bridge rectifier. If we go back here, you will find, as you can see, four pins. So this is bridge rectifier. Here we have MOSFET IC inductors, diode, MOSFET, here we have basically the network card where we have many ceramic capacitors, the processor and many ICs, this is the heatsink and under the heatsink we have the processor for the whole motherboard, this is the processor for the whole motherboard and this is the processor for just this daughter board, the network board, we have here LEDs Electrolytic capacitors. This is RAM chips as you can see over here. This is THT transformers Ballast capacitors fuse and diode and we have connectors So for power electronic motherboards as you can see always we have the same working principle or we always the primary stage and the secondary stage where we have the input power the fuse the Electromagnetic anti interference capacitors for protection. Okay, we have diodes over here and we have the CTN resistor. We have this is the bridge rectifier, as you can see over here. We have the transformer, electrolytic capacitors, and over here we have ballast capacitors. This diode, this is the Schottky diode, it's not the same as the diodes over here. Basically, this diode, this is a very fast diode. Never replace this diode with one of this, for example. So we have resistors, transistors, optocoupler or opto-isolator. Here we have the power IC, the bridge rectifier, the Schutke diode, Zener diodes, and the input. So right now, let's test some transistors. NPN transistors and PNP transistors. So as you can see here in this motherboard, we have many transistors. Basically, the reference of transistor is Q. So here we have the base, emitter, and collector. Okay. So base, emitter, collector. Okay. So basically here for NPN transistor, you will get a reading when you place the red probe of the multimeter in the base and the black probe once in the collector and once in emitter. And for PNP transistor, you will get a reading when you place the black probe of the multimeter in the base and the red probe once in collector and once in emitter. So let's select the buzzer option or the diode option in the multimeter and let's get started so let's check this transistor so we're gonna put the black probe in the base and the red probe in the emitter we get a reading so base collector we get a reading means this is a good transistor okay we get a reading between base collector and base emitter so this is basically a pmp transistor okay P amp transistor okay because we move the positive terminal so here we have a reading 
and here also we have a red okay so if we switch the probes we should not get any reading because this is a p amp transistor so let's see here between base emitter we have nothing base collector we have nothing in the multimeter means this is a good transistor and of course this is a p amp transistor so let's say right now the second transistor basically this transistor is amp in transistor so let's put the red probe in the base and the black probe once in the collector and once in the emitter we have a reading here between base emitter and here we have a reading between base collector it means this is a good transistor and of course this is npn transistor as you can see we have negative positive here in the base and negative okay so this is npn transistor because we get reading when we move the, the black probe of the multimeter okay so if we switch the probes we should not get any reading so let's check here between base emitter we have nothing in the multimeter base collector nothing in the multimeter okay so this is basically a good transistor so let's check other types of transistor here basically this is a transistor with four terminals okay but the two terminals in the middle are connected together okay here we have base as you can see collector this also is connected these two pins are connected together and emitter okay so base collector and emitter so let's check first these two terminals so we get in the multimeter a low resistance about zero ohm means these two terminals are connected together let's check this also we have a low resistance in the multimeter so these two terminals are connected together so right now we gotta check these two transistors so let's put here between base collector we get a reading so base emitter we get a reading so this is a good transistor if you get any buzzer or a low resistance in the multimeter means the transistor is bad so if we switch the probes nothing in the multimeter okay so this is a good transistor so let's check the second one so here we have base as you can see collector and emitter so let's put the black probe in the base and the red probe once in emitter and once in collector so we get a reading here and also base emitter we get a reading means basically this is a good transistor okay so let's check this kind of transistor also basically this is SMT transistor or surface mount technology device transistors we find this kind of transistor in computer motherboards so basically here we have four terminals the two terminals in the middle are the collector okay the reference for the transistor is q so here we have base as you can see collector here also we have collector okay because connected together and here we have emitter so let's check using the same working principle first let's check these two terminals here we have a low resistance in the multimeter means the two terminals are connected together so right now we got to check this transistor using the same working principle here we have a reading between the base and collector and between base and emitter we have a reading means this is a p and p transistor because we move the read probe of the multimeter when you move the read probe of the multimeter means you have a p and p transistor and when you move the black probe of the multimeter means you have an so n p n component inductor or winding as you can see basically this is an inductor it contains basically two inductors as you can see we have two color over here we have a red color color and we have this orange color okay so this is the first inductor each inductor has two terminals and this is the second inductor
So basically, the inductors has as a purpose to increase the current in the circuit. Here we have another inductor, as you can see, it contains just one winding or one inductor, okay? There is many types of inductors. Here we have another inductor. We find basically this kind of conductor into desktop motherboard. Okay, so you can test this, this inductor using the multimeter and by choosing the continuity option in the multimeter. You should get a very low resistance or a buzzer in the multimeter. This inductor also we find it near to the processor in the desktop motherboard. Now we have the relay as you can see. This is the relay. So basically the relay contains four pins. Two pins for inductor as you can see here we have inductor and the other two pins are basically for a switch the relay has some characteristics in ten, so the voltage here we have 24 voltage and 10 amps so this relay transformed 24 volt to 240 volt okay so we have another relay here as you can see so always you should find inductor and a switch here we have inductor and over here we have switch once the inductor receives the power the switch will be closed okay and then the power will pass from one terminal to another so the characteristics for this relay as you can see is 24 volt and 125 volt so it transform 24 volt to 125 volt okay depending on the circuit next we have rectifier bridge rectifier okay so this rectifiers basically are used in the switch mode power supply okay in order to transform the voltage from alternating voltage to continuous voltage as you can see here for the bridge rectifier it has four pins okay so i will show you in the next lectures how to test the bridge rectifier using the multimeter don't worry i will teach you how to test all these components using the multimeter in the next lectures next. so here we have this is an ic basically this is dial line package ic this is an ic but Specifically, this IC is the BIOS, the Basic Input Output System IC. So here we have this capacitor. This is a very known capacitor, CPP61, with 450 volts, as you can see, and 50, 60 hertz. So basically, this capacitor is used to remove the, the, the interference in the circuit. There is many types of capacitors, as you can see. The, we use this kind of capacitor basically to remove the interference frequency but for the first capacitor we use it especially in fans we called it sometimes starter capacitor and here we have transformer as you can see and i am going to show you how to test all these components of course the transformer has two parts or two stage the primary stage and the secondary stage this is the electromagnetic interference inductor okay so this Kind. This is not a transformer. It remove. This basically is used to remove and to eliminate the interference in the circuit. Here we have another transformer that contains two inductors or winding: a primary winding and secondary winding. Here we have a switch. Okay, this is a switch. We find this kind of switch in laptops, in computer motherboards. I'm going to show you how to test this kind of switch. It has basically four pins or two pins. So two pins here for ground and two pins for 3 volts 3.3 volts okay and over here we have another switch basically the switch has just two terminals okay one terminal for ground connected to ground and the other one connected to 3.3 volt once you click it you shunt between 3.3 volt and the ground and the laptop will turn on here basically we have some oscillators we find this kind of oscillators in the switch mode power supply okay this is controller they control the power they control exactly the, the the transformers and the power in the motherboard i will we gonna see all this in the next lectures here basically this is capacitors ceramic capacitors okay this is ceramic capacitors we find sometimes the ballast capacitors in this shape but this is ceramic capacitors so the ceramic capacitors has the purpose to remove the noise in the circuit so 
we we'll called it filtering capacitors and over here we have fuses all these components are fuses okay protection component the fuse protect the circuit for high current for example this fuse this is a blown fuse this fuse is damaged failed do you see here the wire inside it the wire is scattered okay is burned so of course the fuse has two main characteristics so the voltage and the amps so let's see the characteristics for this fuse for example so we have three amps as you can see and 250 volts so this fuse is failed you should replace it with another fuse with the same characteristics three amps 250 volts and of course there is many types of fuses so let's see the characteristics of this fuse also so let's zoom a little bit in order to see the characteristics so as you can see we have 10 amps okay 10 amps and 250 volts so the wire will will be in this fuse very thick and of course there is many other types of fuses for example this is another fuse okay that is covered so remember the fuse has two characteristics amps and voltage so here we have resistors okay this is basically resistors of course resistors you can identify the, the capacity of any resistor using just colors okay or of course you can identify it using the multimeter i'm going to show you all this in the next lectures then so we over here we have electrolytic capacitor or chemical capacitor this is another type of electrolytic capacitor we can call it acmd capacitors we find this kind of capacitors in the computer motherboard and also in the laptop motherboard okay so basically it has two two characteristics the voltage and the unit infrared for example this one we have three 390 volts microfarad and 25 volts okay. and of course it has two terminals negative terminal and positive terminal of course sometimes you can find some capacitors with a code on it just letters i'm going to show you in the next lectures all about this so the capacitors we use it to filter and to make the voltage a continuous voltage so here we have another capacitor this is basically a capacitor that is used in the circuit this capacitor connect the, the 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 line voltage with the neutral voltage in order to remove the the interference in the circuit so this small component basically is a ceramic capacitor or pf capacitor peak of heart capacitor we find it everywhere in computer motherboard this is a very important component that remove the noise in the circuit so here we have diodes as you can see this is diodes normal diodes as you can see with cathode and anode okay as you can see we have cathode anode and here we have the cathode okay so this capacitor let the current to pass just in one direction from the anode to the cathode we use often this component to rectify the current and to protect some circuit here we have the zener diode that we use to stabilize the current in the circuits here we have cathode as you can see zener diode stabilization of current in the circuit so this is another capacitor we called it tantalum capacitor tantalum capacitor this is basically a polarized capacitor as you can see polarized capacitor also we use it in everywhere in the in any circuit in the computer so, so this component basically it's not diode it's not resistor this is inductor okay you can find this kind of inductor for example in computer motherboard on or, or other devices so here this is a very important component that i'm going to teach you all right so this is the motor the motor contain two parts inside it a rotor and a stator okay so this is the rotor okay here i have plus and minus two terminals in order to power it so this is the rotor and the stator inside it let's i'm showing you how so here this is the inside of the motor so here in this through the sta the rotor and this is the stator this inductors means stator a fixed component and a moving component i have a video in my channel that explain the motor how the motor works 
The inductors and coils are usually used to adjust the current in the circuit. Okay? That's why we find it in the output. For example, here, you can find an inductor like this is basically the symbol, and then here, a capacitor that is connected to the ground, an electrolytic capacitor like this one, or like this one. Then here, you will get, for example, output. For example, 5 volts. Okay, so the inductor, its reference is L, or PL. So, as we have here, L, do you see L15 for test inductor? How to test inductor? Easy, you can just use the multimeter and you should select the continuity option since the inductor is just a wire. Okay, so let's select the continuity option in the multimeter. Okay, let's begin with this one for example. For this one here, this is one inductor. I can just put one probe here, and the second one here, I should get as you can see the continuity in the multimeter. This one, the same working principle, one probe here to other probe here, as you can see. So, for this one, basically, it contains, as you can see, two inductors. Do you see? A different color. This is the first inductor, the red one, and here the orange one is the second inductor. So, this is the first inductor, these two, and here we have the second inductor. So, let's check it. So, one probe here and the other here. So let's check one from here and the second here, as you can see in the multimeter. So let's check the second one here also, this inductor also. So so one from here and the second from here, as you can see in the multimeter. This is basically the symbol for the fuse. You can find F. The reference is F, or sometimes you can find PF sometimes. Okay. You can find this symbol or even this symbol, as you can see, like resistor. Also, this is the symbol for the fuse. For the function, its function is protection. It protects the circuit from high current. That's why we find over here, if you focus here, as you can see, so let's see. Do you see here? We have three amps over here. 250 volt. So this is the maximum voltage and amps that this fuse can support. Okay, so its function is protection. Protection. Okay, for this fuse, for example, we have 3 amps, okay, and 250 volt. So this fuse is blown out, is damaged because it could be the current that pass 3 amps or the voltage that pass 250, okay? That's why this one is burned out. So to test it, as you can see here, we're gonna just put one probe here, as you can see, and the other probe here, do you see? Nothing. Normally we should get a continuity here, but we didn't get anything. So let's check, for example, this one, the good one, okay, so one from here and the second from here, do you see, we get zero ohm in the multimeter. Let's check this one also, I don't know if this one is good or not, let's check, this one also is good. So to test this capacitor, as you can see, let's take this one for example, using the continuity option, I can just put one from here, as you can see, and the other probe here, so focus in the multimeter, as you can see. Do you see? The capacitor charge and discharge, as you can see. Do you see? Charge and discharge. Means this capacitor is a good capacitor. Okay? So let's check, for example, the ceramic capacitor here. We should not get a continuity. If you get a continuity like this, means the capacitor is bad. So let's check. So this is a good one. Let's check this one also. So this capacity also is good. Let's check this one also. You see, charge and discharge. This one also is good, okay? So basically here we have 
as you can see the next component that we have is the bridge rectifier do you see here we have bridge rectifier so basically the bridge rectifier as you can see here contain four terminals okay so here we have plus here we have minus and here we have ec as you can see plus minus ec so to test this bridge rectifier you should always put the negative probe into positive terminal the inverse or put the read probe into negative terminal and test with these two pins you should find two diodes so let's do it so let's check this one first so as you can see here we have plus so i gotta put the black room here here i should find a diode 500 or 600 so first let's go to diode option as you can see here we have diode option do you see 500 grow voltage we have the first diode here we have the second diode okay if we swap the probes as you can see if i put the positive probe in the positive terminal nothing in the multimeter nothing in the multimeter means the bridge rectifier is good let's check this also as you can see so here we have the positive terminal okay I should put the red probe here, as you can see, the, the black probe in the positive terminal. So let's make like this, okay? And this probe, once here, we get, we get, we get the first diode, the voltage. Let's check this probe also, also, as you can see. If I swap the probe using the same working principle, as you can see, nothing in the multimeter nothing in the multimeter okay so this is also a good bridge rectifier so this is bridge rectifier we call it basically okay bridge okay the bridge so next we have mosfets basically this kind of component it could be a mosfet voltage regulators oscillators should key diode etc so we we base on the part number above it okay for example this could be a voltage regulator or oscillator okay but for this one for example over here we have two diodes this is basically the short key diode or rectifier okay we find this kind of three terminal components in the switch mode power supply that's why always you should use the part number in order to identify the type of this kind of components it could be with three terminals or even four terminals then we have this component we called it crystal oscillator this is a crystal oscillator that generate the timing and the clock always will find this kind of crystal oscillator in the laptop motherboard and computer motherboard near to the clock generator near to the ICH to the BIOS to the super IO etc so if we focus here, let's see the the how how much megahertz in this crystal oscillator we have. As you can see, about 25 megahertz. Next we have batteries. Okay, so basically for the batteries, as you can see here, there are many type of batteries. For example, for this battery, this is a nine volt battery. So the battery has it's like the capacitor it has two terminals positive terminal and a negative terminal so basically there are many types of battery for example here we have another battery here we have plus and minus okay this is basic this battery will find it in the battery of laptop it contains many cells like this here we have other batteries as you can see so always the batteries has plus and minus the batteries generate the voltage and the current so here this is a very dangerous component this is a high tension inductor as you can see high voltage never touch this component please pay attention never touch this kind of component in the circuit okay never touch it this is a high voltage component we'll find it in television and in some devices 
so here we have some connectors as you can see okay the connectors don't neglect the connectors the connectors sometimes is the the cause of the failure in the motherboard and other devices so this is a connector with two pins a connector with three pins as you can see and here we have usb connectors it contains four pins okay four pins so this pin is for five volts minus the data plus the data and the ground okay i'm going to show you how to test it using the multimeter in the next lectures here we have an on off button this is on off button with two terminals you can find two terminals or even three terminals so here we have a selector this is another switch but we call it selector between 100 15 volt and 230 volt okay so this is selector with two terminals of course you can find others with three terminals or even four terminals so here this is the power jack okay this is a power jack so find this power jack in motherboards okay when this power jack is failed the motherboard will be a dead motherboard so there is power jacks with two terminals with three terminals okay and here we have the heatsinks so please guys don't neglect the heatsinks the heatsinks has one of the most important role in every device without these heatsinks everything will burn out in the motherboard the cpu need heatsink do not bridge need heatsink to ich to graphic card the mosfets everything needs to heatsink especially the main components in every device need heatsink so please don't neglect heatsink 